in this lecture we'll have a look at the process called subcontracting and in this group of videos we'll have a look what it means both from a process point of view why a company would subcontract and how we would look like we'll also have a look at a demonstration in SAP and finally we'll have a look at how to set it up and the configuration so first of all what is subcontracting assume that we have a plant and we then have some material that we transfer to a vendor for further processing now this material could be a raw material it could be an intermediate or it could even be a finished goods uh, it's, it's always a material of course and what we do is we transfer or, or we give this material to a vendor for them to add further value to that material and ie for processing so we ship the material we send it to the vendor we still own the material of course and the vendor will work on it or add value to the product and this work is called subcontracting ie we're asking the vendor to do a part of the work and send it back to the plant where the vendor will also include an invoice for the work that they've done and that in a nutshell is subcontracting so the first question I want to ask or explore is why do companies choose to subcontract some of the manufacturing process to a vendor when they could do it themselves in-house so why do companies subcontract versus do it in-house one of the main reasons or one of the big reasons is that the vendor could do the job better and thus provide a better price so it's better done outside because that piece of work the company may not be the ex expert in doing something so it's outside of their core competency for example thus we can see that certain work is better done by the vendor at a better quality and maybe at a cheaper price so, so for example the company wants to do a special promotion and they want to paint uh, their product with a very specific color or style and within that factory they've never done it before so it kind of makes sense to visit a vendor whose speciality is spray painting colors on on materials for that special batch of promotional material it's cheaper and faster to get a vendor who does it as their work to enhance that product as a one-off and this moves to our second reason which is one-off work or um, what we call one-off capacity so as I mentioned before it might be that you just want to do something special to that material as a one-off you never want to do it again it's really not part of your manufacturing product and you might want to subcontract it off the other reason is one of capacity issues so for example let's say um, to the run-up of Christmas you suddenly have a very very big demand and that normal factory cannot cope you can expand your production you then say okay I am going to pay a vendor to do some of the work because for this small limited of time I have an increased demand in production I don't really want to make my factory bigger or hire more people I just outsource some of the work to a vendor just for the peak periods so how does the subcontracting process work or look like in SAP there's actually two types of subcontracting process the first is where 
we the plant send to the vendor material A and they work on material A and send it back so what they do is they take material A they add or do some value added services and they send back material A again the second type of subcontracting is when we send to the vendor material A and B or just material A really and they turn it to material C and this type of subcontracting is called transformation i.e. we send it one material they transform it into a different material and this means that when they do the transformation material A and B will go down and the stock level of material C will go up so those are the two types of transformation the first is where the material doesn't change and the service is added on top of it and the second is where the material that we send is transformed into another material so in short subcontracting is when we send materials from the plant to the vendor so that they can add some further processing or value-added services to that material once the vendor has done the work they will send back either the same material or a new material based on the old material that we send them. In SAP, the process is that we create a purchase order, then we'll create an outbound delivery so that we can do the picking, packing and PGI. And once the material is back, we do a goods receipt which will increase our inventory level of that material and we will post the invoice from the vendor for the services that they've done. When the purchase order is created, we also add the subcontracting materials to the document. The purchase order allows us to pay the vendor for their service and for us to be able to receive back into the plant the material from the vendor. The work done by the vendor could be seen as just a value added service enhancing the material or as part of the standard production process so you convert the material from A to a B material. For the process to work we will have to create a bill of material or BOM which outlines what we send to the vendor and what we expect back and this can be in the form of a we send them A and the vendor sends us back the material A or we send them A and B or just A and they send us back material C i.e transformation. The outbound deliveries for subcontracting can only be created using the transaction ME2O and this causes a slight problem. Outbound deliveries from sales orders and stock transport orders can be created using VL10 and outbound deliveries for subcontracting can only be created using ME2O. This means that in order to create all of the outbound deliveries for your plant, if you have subcontracting, normal deliveries and STOs, you actually have to use both the transaction VL10 and the transaction ME2O as part of your standard process. The material that we send to the vendor is owned by the factory at all times and this can be seen in SAP and in reflected in the GL account. This is an important characteristic of subcontracting the material that we send to the vendor is actually owned by the plant at all times and never at any point is the ownership of the material transferred to the vendor. When we receive the product back into the factory based on the, based on the bomb items we will consume the sent material to the vendor. So in this case material A and B will be consumed when we receive material C from the vendor. The account postings will roll up the, the costs of the service and make and increase the overall cost of the goods itself. And finally in the purchase order you'll see a new tab called sub no it's not subcontractor it's called subcontracting uh, also subcontracts uh, to show that it's a subcontracting purchase order. Now some points to consider.
because the subcontracting deliveries can only be created using ME2O and not VL10 we need a separate process to create the outbound deliveries using ME2O and not VL10 so VL10 for our standard sales orders and STOs and ME2O for the subcontracting but once the delivery has been created we can process it all normally using our normal logistics processes and this is quite important once the delivery has been created the people processing the delivery shouldn't care if it's a delivery from a sales order or a delivery from an STO or a delivery from a subcontracting order they should just all process the deliveries all in the same way the priority of the stock when you compare to sales orders and STOs has to be considered and what I mean by this is that the subcontracting the sales orders and the STOs all uses the same pool of material so you must decide which one has higher priority than the other the next issue is whether the stock at the vendor site should be taken into account when doing an ATP check the primary driver for this is how long it takes for the vendor to deliver that material back to you i.e. how long does a transformation take if the transformation takes quite a long time you may not want to include it in ATP if for example it takes let's say less than a day for example let's say you send the material to the vendor and before it takes them a few hours to process it and they can ship it back to your plant let's say before three o'clock before you start your shipping process then it might make sense to include that ATP stock that is at the vendor site into your ATP consideration so it depends on how fast the vendor can use and return that material back to you and finally we just have to take care about how we do the goods receipt and against which document and how that process looks like in the next video we'll look at how the process works in SAP and we'll see that the purchase order uses the item category of I and the outbound delivery type of LB we'll have a look at how this is done in SAP and the master data and configuration to get the subcontracting process going